This episode of the Beauté Industry Podcast was brought to you by Murad Skincare Australia. Hello and welcome to the Beauté Industry Podcast, your online support community for the professional beauty industry. I am your host, founding director of Beauté Industry, Tamara Reid. Here, we are closing the competitive gap and speaking your language. This is a platform created and dedicated to the professional beauty industry, valuing community over competition. We serve to help connect you with inspiration from industry experts, expand your knowledge through educational pieces, and bring you the latest in product and technology innovation. This is Beauté Industry. Today, my guest is Katie Bacon from Murad Skincare Australia. For 20 years, Katie has been dedicated to the beauty, health and wellness industry. Her incredible career spans across both Australia, UK and Asia Pacific, offering a unique understanding of international business operations and markets. A trained skin therapist, clinical nutritionist and cosmetic chemist, plus overachiever if I might just add, Katie is an advocate for wellness and a scientific approach to treating skin health. One of Murad Skincare's global educators working with Dr. Howard Murad himself and his team to bring skincare professionals of all stripes together to work as a team using scientifically proven formulas and technologies to help people achieve their healthiest, most beautiful skin possible, Katie is living her dream. Today, our conversation goes from bridging the gap between education and sales right the way through to career progression and skin conditions, one I know you're all going to laugh up. Here's Katie and I for Beauté Industry. Katie, welcome to the Beauté Industry podcast. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to join you today. Ah, Katie, thank you. I am the most excited. Um, You don't know this, but you're like one of my favorite humans ever. Every time I talk to you, I just feel like so energized and so, um, I don't even know what the word is other than energized, optimistic almost as well. Like you were just a little radiant beam of sunshine on, on all of the screens that we have obviously connected on over the last two years. So um, yeah, it's really actually lovely to start my morning with you this morning. Or I don't know what to say. I feel like you've just made my day. <laughs> very much the same about you. I, I, yeah, I watch you in amazement. So um, it's amazing that you would think that. So thank you. Oh, we're just big old fangirls of each other, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> um, so Katie, we are going to start back actually at something that I am very intrigued in because I don't know a lot of your history prior to Murad. I know one career step, which I'm excited to explore today as well. Um, But we start our podcast the same way every single episode by digging deep into A, just what even made you enter the industry at all, and then kind of how you got to where you are today. So if we can kind of cast an eye back, um, yeah, what, what attracted you to this industry? Oh, gosh. Well, look, I've been in the industry for 20 years, so it's it's a long time. So it's a lot of a lot of stuff that's been covered in that time. But, um, you know, I am a therapist by trade and I'm an extremely passionate therapist. So even though I'm now just doing some small bits hands on with PR and press, um, I, I love it. I love every second I get my hands on people. So I would say I'm a very passionate tradie. Um, But I'm also really super lucky. So I did start my career as a therapist, but I love education. So over the years, I've had lots of opportunities to be able to further study. So um, I did work in clinical practice, but then I moved into clinical nutrition. Um, And I've also studied cosmetic chemistry too. Uh, And I think because I personally believe or well, I think beauty is holistic, right? So it's not just what we put on the skin or the surface. It's what we eat. I also truly believe how our lifestyle affects our overall health. Um, So for me, it was always about empowering people to look and feel their best. So it didn't matter if it was giving a treatment or it was recommending them the products they were going to use at home or even that guidance or training around their lifestyle choices. For me, it was always how do we link these things together for a more holistic beauty philosophy? 
Um, and people would call me crazy because I feel like I'm always studying, um, but I think it's like my love of learning um, and this real passion for clinical practice that led me to Murad. So I've worked uh, in the industry for 20 years, so I've worked for quite a lot of amazing companies, but what re resonated for me particularly with Murad, and I think I've been lucky enough to get the best job in the world, was that wellness meets clinical practice so it was marrying I guess those two things together um, and I love travel so Murad marries what I love and then travel together so I get to travel the world chatting about inclusive health philosophies um, although sadly at the moment traveling is sort of half as we talked offline like half pajamas but with the business top and then uh, sort of hanging out in your living room internationally zooming but um yeah, a bit of a nutshell, but um, yeah, I'm pretty passionate about the industry we're in. So, so, so cool. How did you go from um, taking the leap from therapist into education? Because when I was previously in education, that was the biggest question that, that therapists and estheticians asked me as I travel around. They'd go, Tamara, I want to be educator, national educator, state-based educator. How can I get your job? So, you know, how did you kind of make that transition? Because I believe that there will be a lot of therapists wanting to know that exact answer. Yeah. Um, gosh, well, I think I, I mean, it's been 20 years in the making, right? So it didn't it definitely didn't happen overnight. But when I worked in clinic, I was always a very good retailer. And it was a bit of a roundabout way to end up in education. So I don't ever believe in sales, but I truly believe, believed in giving clients what they needed to deliver the results. Um, and I was quite lucky to have um, a mentor um, at the time, worked for True Solutions. So I, I credit a lot to, to Mandy Gray and True Solutions in my career. Um, so I actually went to work for them in sales and I worked with department stores to cut my teeth, kind of learning the trade of sales, so to speak. Um, but I was always really passionate about sort of learning as much as I could about products. So even though I was in the sales end, it always linked with an education focus for me. Um, and I was lucky enough to transfer from True Solutions to the UK. And I worked with courthouse clinic groups and, and a distributor over there um, and worked very much around London and the UK, both in education and sales. Um, and it wasn't until I came back to Australia and sort of really my passion started to grow into more education that it, it kind of naturally transitioned that way. But I did start in sales and had a good 10 years in sales, sort of shaping my craft, so to speak, as I learned all of the tools, like finished my clinical nutrition, did my cosmetic chemistry. So all the little little things that you learn along the way that you don't think are going to lead you somewhere or kind of push you to the direction I think that you're going to end up. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, it's funny that you went sales then education because for me, I went the opposite way. I went education into sales and there is a big, um, what's the word, almost like discrepancy or um, misconception in our industry because a lot of like people at that kind of CEO or GM level, they go, well, if you're in education, you're in education. If you're in sales, you're in sales. You kind of can't cross those two paths because they feel like education is a very almost like feminine quality where you're nurturing and, and you're teaching. Um, whereas sales is kind of like a little bit more of a masculine energy where it's like figures and hard stats, but exactly as you've encompassed there, when you have the knowledge of education and you believe in what you're talking about, the sales will come naturally. So I love that you've said that there because I think sometimes people in education want to take that transition into sales or even therapists want to take the transition into sales, but they go, oh my goodness, numbers and figures and stats, that's not me. But if you're such a great therapist that you are the highest retailer by virtue of educating your clients, yeah. then you're doing that very role anyway. Yeah, and I think people think uh, like sales is one of the things that people think is scary, right? Mm -hmm. But everything is a sale. Talking to your partner about a product you really like using is selling it to them or your friends or, you know, every communication channel we have, is, we're, we're either seeking to promote something that we're passionate about or we're educating someone on something. So they're, they're, they can't be individual. I think they're both very much linked. Absolutely. And I love before how you said um, people think you're crazy because of, you, you know, all the amounts of study that you were doing as you were reeling that off, like therapist, education, clinical nutrition, cosmetic chemistry. I'm going, oh my goodness, you must be like 65 to have all of these years of education under your belt, though I know you're not, you know, what is it for you about, about that further study that kind of 
drives you to to continue? Um, I think when I was younger, when I first started in the industry and I finished beauty, I thought I knew everything, like everybody does, like you know it all. Um, and as I get older, the realise the more I know, the less I know. Mm. Um, and so the more I learn, I'm like, oh, my God, but that links to that. And how did I not know that links to that? And then that sort of makes null and void what I've already known. So then you kind of go down that rabbit hole in a way. Um, and for me, it's about making sure that all the information I have is as rounded as possible. Um, I don't want to look back and say I was very nuanced. I, I want to be open minded because our industry, there's so many shades of grey. And I think our industry has a real, probably controversially, but a real habit of mm -hmm. sitting black and white, right? There's no such thing as black and white. Everything has a nuance. Um, and the true nature of science is everything's open to change when it's being open to being incorrect in a way. So what we learn has to be, we have to be able to unlearn and find new ways too. So for me, um, education and, and helping our clients also on that education journey helps make sure that we're well-rounded therapists that are delivering the best to, to our clients. Absolutely. And it feels like you had quite a lot of foresight. I mean, as you said, you've been in the industry such a while now that, you know, you were studying clinical nutrition back you know all those years ago where it's kind of like now we just feel really comfortable talking about lifestyle but even I would say like five years ago you know eight ten years ago therapists often didn't feel comfortable to talk about eating habits and smoking and water and what we were putting in into the into the client's body because they kind of felt like well I'm just doing a facial you know I'm just putting products on the skin how can I possibly almost they felt like they were invading on the client's personal life. But it feels like you very much had that foresight because you're already talking about nutrition all of those years ago. Did you finally give like a little woohoo when the industry caught up and now we're like, yes, we can open these conversations without any of that kind of, you know, burden around us? Yeah. Oh, look, I'm so happy anytime anyone talks um, about nutrition when it comes to skin health. I mean, most people, if they ever have a consult with me, I sort of ask them everything from their bowel movements straight through to what their, their stress and lifestyle is because it's so linked. And I think now we're also learning so much more about gut health and how our gut and our brain is linked to our skin and so much research. For example, rosacea is a good good example that we know that things like leaky gut and issues with with our guts affects directly affects things like rosacea so I think now we know that it's again it's something that we need to move forward as combining them rather than having them as separate um, modalities and I know a lot of therapists are scared to talk about nutrition with their clients because they don't feel they have um I guess the authority to be able to talk about it. And we're not telling our clients what to do. We're just educating them on, uh, I guess, more of a holistic way of achieving their goals via that, I guess, the 360 approach. Absolutely. And you must have felt like you had hit the jackpot when you landed um, the global educator role for Murad. As you said, you've got this huge love of nutrition and, you know, practicality of being a therapist by trade. And then of course your cosmetic chemistry plays into that. So, you know, with Murad's philosophy, one of the things that I really love about it is that it has these four pillars of wellness, which often we, we kind of don't focus on when we look at products, we're just like, what is the ingredient, you know, but I love that Murad is wrapped in this, in this wellness. And for anyone that is listening that, that possibly doesn't know or haven't heard of these before, I just want to read them out because I think that they're quite important. So um, the first pillar is eat your water. Um, the second one is awaken your body. We have number three, be kind to your mind. And then number four is nourish your skin. Um, but all of that is then entrenched in, you know, high performance technologies and formulas. So, I mean, that that just must have literally felt like the perfect role for you to kind of segue into. And then global educator is such a very cool role. So tell me more about that. It is a very cool role. So, uh, yeah, I get to work with um, Dr. Murad and, and the team there. And I, Dr. Murad, a lot of people aren't familiar with him, but he's just such, I, I don't know, one of the most inspirational people I've ever met. He's just like every normal person. So there's no, I don't know, I'm trying to look for the word, airs and graces, if that makes sense. He's just a really humble, beautiful man. I know you've interviewed him on, on your podcast um, but I think he's so pioneering because he was talking about all of these things, you know, 
for 50 years or more. Um, but probably the easiest thing to do is give you a bit of background for those that aren't familiar with, with Mira, just so you, you kind of know where we're coming from, from a brand perspective. But um, the brand was founded in 1989 by Dr. Howard Murad, who is our founder. So he's a board certified dermatologist as well as a pharmacist. Um, and Doctor is really, and the brand is what we call a, a pioneer in clinical skin care. So he's particularly dedicated to encouraging people to live happier, healthier, and those more fulfilling lives. So it's not just about skin care. Um, but we do have a pretty unique philosophy. Uh, you talked about the four pillars, but it's this whole person approach to health and beauty. So it's to really inspire people to, as you mentioned, nourish their skin through efficacious skin care, awaken your body through physical activity, eating your water. This is really important because we know that when we can eat water rich fruits and vegetables, we're able to fuel our body with what it needs to be healthy. Um, and I don't think it's any surprise with various lockdowns and COVID that being kind to our mind is a pretty important thing that we need to focus on as well. So really these four pillars encourage therapists and, and our customers as well to work towards unlocking their own wellness. And back when Dr. founded the brand, it wasn't just about sharing the innovative technologies that you mentioned, but it was also for him to advance his research on the effects that things like the environment, nutrition and lifestyle actually have on the skin. Um, so a lot of people aren't aware that Dr. was one of the first people to identify the concept of cultural stress. Now, this is what we call um, the stress of modern living. Um, and this was as early as 2000. And he really noted that this was a major threat to our health. And I think that probably really resonates now. Uh, so the Murad Modern Wellness Program, which we now call it, all these four pillars to wellness that you mentioned, really seeks to connect the dots or this 360 wellness lifestyle, which includes you know, various things like cellular hydration, which we know is key, nutrition, mental wellness, joyful exercise is another one, and of course, creative expression. After the break, Katie speaks to the physiological and emotional reasons as to why we are seeing an increase in reactions post-lockdown. But first, a little bit more about today's beauty partner, none other than Murad Skincare. Clinical but cool, doctor but hardly dull, science but not stuffy, Murad Skincare, founded by dermatologist and pharmacist Dr. Howard Murad, was the first modern doctor brand to market in 1989, setting a new standard for high performance skincare. For over 30 years, Murad has based its products on scientifically proven formulas and technologies to help people achieve the healthiest, most beautiful skin possible. Inspired by Dr. Murad's lifelong commitment to science-backed wellness, Murad is more than just a skincare product. They create products and professional experiences, not only for healthier skin, but for happier lives. Murad focuses on achieving your skin goals, not just concerns, to look after inclusive health philosophy. They believe that skincare is not superficial because it's healthcare. And when you have a beautiful skin, it's a sign that you have a healthy body and a healthy mind. That was spoken by Dr. Howard Murad. Murad stands for skincare, healthcare, and self-care. And you can mention Beauté 20, that's Beauté 20, for a 20% discount on your first opening order and discover how Murad can transform your client's skin and your business by connecting at murad.com.au. Thank you so much to the team at Murad for making this episode of the Beauté Industry Podcast possible. And now back to Katie. Yeah, I totally agree with what you were saying about Dr. Muraj. I, when when people pitch people to interview on this podcast, which we get, you know, a lot of by way of like PR companies and things like that, and they go, oh, here's another doctor, here's another doctor, here's another doctor, and I go, oh, okay, let's get them on. But with Dr. Murad, I was like very pleasantly surprised, you know, such like energy and just like vibrance, you know, and everything he was saying, I was like hooked. It's like, you have me sold. <laughs> and then, um, you know, I started following him on LinkedIn and it's just so nice every morning I opened up LinkedIn and just kind of check what's been happening as I do Twitter and probably all the other social accounts. But he's always got these beautiful pictures, you know, which as we know, we chatted in that episode, which I'll link in the show notes that he is actually an artist as well. I mean, what cannot the man do? Yeah. Um, but it's just so nice to kind of open this up and just 
uh, even for myself unpack, like, what am I seeing in this kind of abstract art today? You know, and sometimes I might see something that resonates with my mind, or I might see something that resonates with, you know, how I'm feeling internally, or, you know, that I do need to move and exercise. And I think it's just so beautiful that a skincare brand and product can actually be wrapped in all of these other things of, you know, creative expression and, and, you know, nutrition, not just, not just skincare, you know, it's so much more than that. And um, I think that's definitely outlining in all of the work that you're doing um, as an educator as well, which is very, very cool. Um, And you mentioned their lockdown and I know Australia particularly, but for everyone who's listening globally, like lockdown has been such a big, heavy burden for all of us. Um, And obviously we've seen this so much on all of ours and our clients' skin as well. And we've been having lots of online consultations and Zoom calls and we're all looking at each other on Zoom and thinking, oh my goodness, I need to sort my skin out ASAP. But the cultural stress that you mentioned there as well is certainly having an impact on on our skin and how it's responding. And I know that you saw an increase in this um, in terms of the post-treatment reactions as well, which is really, really interesting. So can you just speak to that a little for us? Yeah, so um, it was a pattern that we noticed here in Australia with, with our various lockdowns. And when I spoke to my other global trainers and colleagues, it was something that resonated globally too. And it was this sort of pattern in post-treatment and product reactions as well as I guess this overall reporting of skin in general becoming more sensitised when they came back into clinics. So I guess we're going off the back of the last lockdown because I'm in New South Wales and for anyone else, we're still in lockdown, so we're hopefully reopening soon. But for those that are open, they'll probably resonate with this a bit. But really, I think what we were seeing was a rise in more inflammatory skin conditions being reported, and that that links to um, what we're talking about quite well. Um, We definitely had more reactivity um, to home care products as well as professional services because things like compromised skin barriers are quite high. Uh, Mask wearing, which we are going to talk about, is very much linked to a compromised barrier, but all that moisture, right, that's hiding under those masks. Mm. And when I started tracking cases, I noticed that in 90% of the reactions or skin irritations, if we take away things like allergic reactions, elevated stress levels were reported in all of those cases. Mm. So I think it's pretty safe to say there's a real strong correlation between skin sensitivity and reactivity and stress. Um, And of course, I think there's that tendency to jump straight back in for clients that maybe have booked courses and we've gone into lockdown or they're like looking on Zoom going, God, I need my knee needling or God, I need those peels. Let's just get in there and remove it all. Um, But what we're not thinking is it's been four months for a lot of people right now or Mm -hmm. longer of lockdowns. They haven't had those treatments. They haven't been prepped. They haven't built up. There's been a significant period of time. So um, jumping straight back into those kind of hardcore courses or treatments um, can lead to a little bit of that irritation and, and problem with the skin as well. Totally. I, yeah, it's funny that you say that because I was just thinking the other day, like, what's the first treatment I'm going to get tomorrow? You know, and I've said to my husband, you're taking baby for five hours. Like I'm going to do a whole head to toe. Mama needs some love. Right. (laughs) And and I was thinking like, I'm going to go straight for the needling. And then I want some form of relaxation in there as well. And definitely a scalp massage. And, you know, I probably need like a salt body scrub, just a whole body treatment. And, um, but I was, I was considering that as well. Like I can't go straight to needling because my last professional facial was while I was pregnant, which was over 10 months ago now. Right. And, you know, I haven't been using a a huge amount of retinols because obviously I've still been breastfeeding in the meantime, and I didn't use retinols when I was, um, pregnant obviously. And so my skin hasn't even had a whole host of actives, you know, if I'm very honest. So while I'm like chomping at the bit and I want to get those serious skin results yesterday, um, we do need to be really careful because my skin would probably respond abnormally. I've been wearing a mask every single day. I'm inside in heating every single day. You know, I'm probably having more coffees than I normally do because I'm not getting that vitamin D. So I need that thirst for energy. Um, You know, so I think that's, it's really, um, 
what's the word? It's, it's like something that we as therapists really need to take into consideration when we're treating our clients, because our clients are going to go, want to go from zero to 10, you know, in terms of that treatment, I want results now, but I think we really need to, to actually step back and go, well, hang on, when was your last treatment and actually dig a little bit deeper into that consultation? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, I think consultations is going to be an interesting one because with limited to when we reopen for some states, I know for those of you that are open, you've you've overcome these challenges. Mm. But um, particularly for New South Wales and Victoria, where where we're both coming from, when we reopen, there'll be short time frames for treatments. We're not going to have necessarily that time for an efficient consultation. So it's trying to find ways that we can make sure that we are really reassessing and reevaluating the skin properly um, to ensure skin health with our treatments. Yeah, that's a good point because the wait lists are going to be crazy and people are going to go, oh, we'll just fit me in for a quick half hour appeal here. You know, I'll just take anything I can. And obviously we know the the emotional stress that comes with the silly season and Christmas is coming up and, you know, it's it's a whole thing. And actually, in fact, um, you know, from a histological and psychological point of view, um, you guys have been seeing a lot of that on the skin in terms of reactions because of all of the emotions that these last two years have, have really thrown at us. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, gosh, that's that's one. It's like, where do you start with that? Because that's such a huge topic. And I'll, I'll try and make, <laughs> make mm-hmm. my thoughts on that as simple as possible. But um, I'm going to say air quotes of in, in that unprecedented time, right? So we're in this once in a lifetime kind of change and uncertainty and craziness. Um, and this crazy world is going to impact our health. It's going to impact our skin and particularly our nervous system and gut. And I do love to talk about the nervous system and gut because, again, it's all intrinsically linked. Um, but I'll come back to cultural stress because this is one we talk a lot about at Murad. And when I say cultural stress, we're talking, as you mentioned, that ever pervasive, always on stress, which is, of course, lockdowns, could be financial stress. Look, hats off to all the homeschoolers because, oh, my God, that's tough. Mm-hmm. <sighs> uncertainty and isolation is a big one too so I think it's pretty unsurprising that we're also seeing these I guess these spikes in depression anxiety Uh, and we also know that with lockdowns and the times as they are these major changes affect our daily habits and of course our health habits so if we look at then um, the histology perspective there's this huge link between the relationship between stress and skin conditions. Um, And we know that skin is the largest organ of the body. So of course it's an immediate perceiver of stress and it's also a target of stress responses. Um, So we all know that kind of dull, devitalized, tired look that we get when we're stressed. Um, And it does this through something called the skin periphery, um, peripheral HPA axis, which I encourage you all to Google because there's so much amazing content, you know, on PubMed and out there. Um, but stress is, a, you know, an overarching term. So specifically what I'm referring to when I talk about stress is one of our stress hormones, cortisol. So when we have elevated levels, it's going to affect so many aspects of our skin from inhibiting apoptosis of our cells. It's going to work with degranulation of mast cells, increasing that vascular permeability. Um, and it also affects our cell turnover. So our cells um, slower to shed. So you know, there's a lot of factors there. We also know with rises in, in cortisol levels, it's going to disrupt our hormones. So that facilitates things like sebum regulation. So for some, we're going to become more oily. We're going to get those clogged pores. We might develop acne. Um, so really, in a nutshell, cells aren't turning over properly. We have more redundant cell buildup, an increase in transepidermal water loss, and an increase in oil production. So that's a lot that's going on with your client if we're not sort of delving in through consultations and really checking in with our clients. Um, so that's why at Mirad, we always say as clinicians, we really need to understand how stress affects the body and our stress levels and how their lifestyle is going to affect the treatment program. Because as you said, you're wanting to book in for your needling, but you, you're kind of a bit, um, you haven't used your actors for a while or you, you, you know, you've been busy yourself. So is that client going to be the best client to do that treatment on because we I mean most of us know that stress is going to impact our wound healing right so if we've got poor wound healing lots of chronic inflammation well there's going to be degenerative effects that that happen and we know that virtually all disease uh, conditions are associated with aging um, and are linked to stress and, and inflammation so 
yeah, stress management is a bit of um, an essential, not really a luxury these days. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think, you know, it's something to be called out that therapists have really never treated people with a mass of people, I should say, with this much stress. You know, like, yes, prior to the pandemic, we were all stressed. We were all running around on coffee and dry shampoo and adrenaline, right? That's that's just what we were doing. Busy as a form of currency. How are you busy? How are you busy? But it's yeah. like this pandemic has taken us from how are you busy to how are you overloaded, overwhelmed, so stressed, financially mm-hmm. impacted. Our businesses have closed down. As you mentioned, layer that with homeschool and being with your partner or your housemates, whoever, 24-7, you can't take that break. So it's like you've gone from stress level maybe like five to stress level 50 and yeah. also layer that with the fact that we have to wear masks now as well. So mm-hmm. it's it's. I think sometimes as therapists we go, oh, I know how to treat stress skin. And it's like, yes, we do know how how to treat stress skin of a level five stress, but this is a level 50 stress. So this is like a whole new level of cultural stress that we actually need to take our hat off and go, okay, I've never treated this skin condition before. I've never treated this type of skin. Um, I've never really treated maskne because of, again, it's a whole new form of acne that we didn't have prior to the pandemic. So how should we be kind of treating these different skins in which we might not feel so comfortable with now that we are returning back to opening up and, and seeing our clients in the treatment room? Yeah. Well, one of the questions we say um, to our, our, our clients to ask their customers is, do you feel that stress and if fatigue affect the way that you look and feel? And I think that's a really great way to start your, your conversations with your clients, because if they say the answer is yes, then that really helps you shape where you're going to go from there. Um, I definitely know myself, stress and fatigue affects the way I look and feel. Um, but I think If we focus on what you said with face masks, because I think that's probably a key one that most people are going to be concerned with right now. And I know that maskany term is really popular, um, but outside of those breakouts, I think what we should be focusing on is that redness, the bumpiness, the irritation and what's happening there. So for many people, it's going to be that moisture that's created wearing those masks, that contact dermatitis, the inflammation, that compromised barrier. Um, All of these things are going to mean that this is going to affect the types of treatments we're able to do. Uh, So as estheticians, when we we do analyse the skin, we, we do actually need to, I would say, add that certain level of risk that your client is going to inherently have because they are wearing masks. Um, So just being mindful that those particular areas on the face are probably going to flare up maybe if you do a peel or we're going to do those treatments. So how do we, I guess, mitigate risk is key. Um, And then I guess respecting the barrier is so important, right? So starting slow with your clients, educating them, building them up, just to help their skin be more resilient because otherwise you'll start them, you know, way back from where they were before. And once we bugger up, for want of a better word, a barrier, it can take us two to six mm. months to, to repair it. So really focusing on more anti-inflammatory ingredients, both internally and externally, ceramides, fatty acids, all of these incredible ingredients that we know help support the skin, particularly in times of stress. Absolutely. And always a less is more approach. And this is when it comes down to something that we have been just preaching for the last two years is like keeping connected with your clients Mm -hmm. though your business doors are closed your business is not closed like you can still do your zoom consultations and jump into a phone call or even just text message or email edm like how are you do you need a chat and you know uh, you sent me this fabulous product and this is not a plug whatsoever and everyone knows you know who mm-hmm. listens to this only knows that I only say things that are 100% true but I um I moved from Queensland down to Victoria in the last month and Queensland oh my goodness has had it so damn easy let me say um oh. everyone in Queensland who goes we're in the same boat no you're not um but you know now I'm wearing a mask full time, you know, in Victoria. And all of a sudden I've got all of this underlying congestion. It's not coming to the surface. It's not a blackhead. It's not a pimple. It's just bumpy. You know, it kind of looks like um, Cosmetica, you know, it's really sitting under the skin. And that is just literally from wearing the mask. And um, I thought, what can I do at home? You know, and I've been using the replenishing multi-acid peel. Now, the first time I put it on, I was like, holy goodness. Oh my goodness. It was like, a 10 out of 10, right? 
And normally post uh, prior to the pandemic, I probably wouldn't have felt anything, you know, because it's just a beautiful combination of AHAs on the skin. So I might've felt a little kind of like ants tingling, you know, but I was like, wow, 10 out of 10, which really brought me back to, okay, Tamara, you must be stressed. Your barrier must be impaired, but I've been using this now. I just started off once a week and then I've been using it more frequently three times a week and kind of a little bit more frequently now. And now that I'm healing my barrier, it's actually less and less tingly. And I think, you know, sometimes as therapists, we go, oh, it's just, it's just such a medial product. But in, in times like this, less actually is more, because if you had said to the client and Katie, if you had prescribed this to me, which you did, and you said, go in every single day, it's fine. My skin would have reacted and, and it would have been a true reaction. Whereas, you know, I've just started this off slowly once a week, it's a beautiful skin response. And now my skin is actually hearing and, and repairing that barrier more. That's amazing. Yeah, you're strengthening your skin as you go. I love that you love that product. That's like one of my desert island, <laughs> the best. It's got a good stingle. But, uh, yeah, if your barrier is barrier's a little bit compromised, it can have, yeah, it's, it's quite effective. Let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, absolutely. And I think this brings me to, um, you know, my next thought that, People have been really over-treating the skin during lockdown. And I think like, you know, why not? I'm just going to do a peel this day. I'm going to do a mask this day. And all of a sudden we're so bored that we're at home and we've, we're doing a facial every single day, right? And we're, we've been seeing a lot of our clients do home remedies, like at-home DIY facial and like um, advanced facial is like two of the most hotly Googled terms um, over the last two years because clients can't go into their skin centers. So they want to do more at home. Um, and sometimes the products are just too strong for them or they're self-prescribing um, or even just overusing what they have. Um, so, you know, when we talk about clients and, and what they use at home and we were saying less is more, like how do we actually communicate this to our clients? Because we're all in that like instant gratification era where if I want a burger, I can get it on Uber Eats in 20 minutes. You know, if I want to do a facial, I can do it at home quickly, fastly, highly actively. So how can we kind of like slow this down and let our clients know that this is like a gradual thing that we need to build up to? Oh, yes. It, where to start right now? It's crazy. And this is a really great example of a little bit of knowledge is really dangerous, right? Mm. Sometimes I, at the moment I'm, I'm on this, this mission about actives, but I won't go off on a rant. That's maybe a podcast for another day. But um, I, I truly think that skincare right now is the new diet culture. You know how there's all this stuff, one thing under, undermines another thing, another thing undermines that. And really, mm. I think this is where skincare is at at the moment. Everyone's an expert. Um, COVID has really, I would not say it's changed. Yeah, it has. Yeah, it's changed the beauty world in terms of the availability of information and also how, um, I guess, accessed it is by us being very much online. Um, so our clients are getting so much information, you know, whether it's all good or bad, different conversation, but everything's there. Um, and interestingly, before I jumped on, on this call, I was just looking at industry trends and the beauty industry as a whole over the last sort of 12, 24 months has about 500 billion in sales. Isn't that crazy? Like 500 billion wow. and skincare throughout COVID has jumped by 20%. So I find that mental because that means that basically everyone is marketing to your customer. Everyone is marketing to you. Everyone wants to sell their product, right? Mm -hmm. So influencers are out there. We've got cosmetic companies selling, you know, their latest and greatest trend and miracles and magical wands. And, you know, we're all competing for the same dollar, which is why there's a lot, you know, if you can't compete on product, you, you compete on misinformation. Um, but it, it does mean it's very easy for our clients to be lured. And as you said, they're bored, they're at home, they're looking for things to do. So um, I know right now the big things like, oh, let's throw loads of retinol on and let's layer it with our actives and this goes with this and partners with this and we've got a 40-step skincare routine. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the challenge is the general, I know there's so many educated consumers that probably listen to your podcast, but the general consumer doesn't understand nuance. And I say nuance is that all actives are great, but as, a, as an educated professional that's telling someone how to use it, as you said, I used it once a day, I built up, um, you're going to get better guidance on the suitability for your skin if it's even what you need, um, which, is, which is one. We do um, skin check-ins and I can't tell you how many people buy all of these products. I'm like, you, you like, literally need none of these things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. 
Um, so I do think we're on this precipice where I, I'd kind of put the call out to, to therapists, the dermal estheticians and those dermatologists out there to, to, to use your socials or to get out there and really educate clients um, over, over treating and, you know, how important the skin barrier is and the long-term health of the skin. Um, and that really more does not equal better. I, I know that there's this whole thing around percentages and that's that actually really is irrelevant when it comes to ha- how effective a product is. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's, it's putting out correct, accurate, informative information to our consumers and really educating them on what's going to be suitable and for them, because they are unique, right? Everyone's a unique expression. So how can we pare down their routine using clinically proven ingredients that are going to also help fortify the skin barrier? Mm, Absolutely. And I really want to highlight that point because as you said, there is so much being marketed to our clients right now and our clients like us are fatigued. You know, they're scrolling all day. They've got Netflix on, they've got their TV on, they've got their radio on just so that they can kind of get, you know, out of their house without leaving the house, you know, if they're in lockdown or they're trying to absorb so much information and through all of that information is all of this marketing, you know, and when we see influencers and TV commercials and all of this kind of stuff really hit our clients, what they're hitting the clients with is the product and the benefit right? We as therapists and estheticians and business owners need to hit our clients with coming back to like the start of this episode, the education, because the TV commercials and the influencers, unless you're like an influencer who has beauty and skincare and that knowledge background, I put you to the side, but otherwise it's kind of just like basic 101 marketing. I like this product. I think you should like this product as well. Here's why, right? Whereas we have this knowledge and I know a lot of people in our industry feel really empathetic and go, oh, our clients are going through so much right now. I don't want to market to them. I don't want to sell to them. But yeah. if your client is sitting at home with mask knee, with stress, you know, with reactive skin and you have the secret and you have the knowledge to help them overcome that please share that with them. And how you share that with them is on your social media. It's by jumping onto the camera and putting it on a story. It's by putting up a post on your Instagram, on your Facebook. You know, it's again, by SMSing them, mask me, question mark, come in and have a chat to us, you know, call us up. These are our favorite products from Marsney. Write a blog. You know, there's so many different ways in which we can educate, which yes, do link back to products because, hey, we can't treat right now. Um, so they're going to have to do some homework at home. But education is that key. And and yeah, it's, it's just so, so important. And I know that's something that you talk a lot about. Yeah, and I think you hit the nail on the head there that, Again, it comes back to that sales element, but mm. they're buying from somewhere. So, so they're going, they're going to purchase something. So why totally. not purchase it from you? Um, you're you're going to help them. You're also there to help guide them. You know, after the, that purchase, you've got that relationship with them. So um, it's really, I guess, setting or putting the ball in action to elevate yourself as a, I guess, an authority that you are and get your clients to rely on you for that sort of, more accurate source of information and guidance. Absolutely. And we might finish on that note there because it's it's just, you know, education, it has been a running theme throughout this whole entire conversation. But I think sometimes we just overanalyze it, you know, and we think too much about educating. And and I think that I just want to leave the people that are listening with this is that you have studied and you are the professional you know, and you know your worth, you know, all of the things that you know about your products, you know, ingredients, you know, you know, like yourself, Katie, you know, you know, nutrition relates to skin, you know, health relates to skin, you know, stress relates to skin. So it's really important that we harness that and and teach that with our clients. Would you agree? 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Incredible. Katie, thank you so much for coming and having a chat with me today. I love, um, I love education. I love your whole philosophy on, um, you know, that's how we treat our clients. And it's been really interesting, actually. I love those stats that you shared about the beauty industry. And that just kind of brings me back to like, we are pandemic proof. We will get through this. Um, yeah. So I really appreciate your time. Well, thank you for having me. I could talk to you for hours. So it's an absolute joy. Thank you. Likewise. Thanks, Katie. 
Wow, what does the new normal look like? Am I right? We are about to open our doors, if you have not already, to all of these new clients, these new skin conditions and the new way of operating. And I hope that you spend a little time on your self-care just in time for you to open those doors and treat your clients because we cannot pour from an empty cup. If you would like to follow along with all of the Murad things, you can, of course, swipe up in your podcast and click through the links or you can head across to Instagram and the socials and give them a follow. And while you're there, why don't you check out us at Butte Industry if you haven't already or let me know who you'd like to hear from next week by coming into my DMs at Tamara Reed Butte. Until next time, stay connected.